Hey all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of a very interesting keyboard. It's called the Voa Moco TK Board Pro, and it has a built-in touchscreen which allows you to program different functions on it. It can be used as a calculator, as a touchpad if you don't want to use your mouse, and it can also be used as customizable keys to launch various applications. It also comes with a built-in speaker that claims to be higher quality and louder than the one that you probably have on your desktop or on your laptop. So this keyboard style for $99, which is actually not too bad for a pretty custom and a unique high-tech keyboard. And it comes in three colors, a pink, a black that we have here today, and also a silver edition. So the packaging contents include this uh, quick user guide slash instruction manual. It can also be used as just a regular keyboard if you simply plug it into the USB port of a Linux or Chromebook, although it won't support the customizable functions that uh, requires Windows. And then there's simply the cable itself, which is made out of a braided material that seems rather durable. Again, USB Type-C connector on the keyboard itself to a regular full-size USB for your laptop or desktop. So taking a closer look at the design of this keyboard first, initial impressions is it is very solid in terms of the construction. The faceplate of the keyboard is made out of plastic, however the entire rear of the unit is made of a solid piece of aluminum, so it feels rather hefty. It has a slightly tapered design to it, so it's a little bit thicker at the top, and then gets thinner towards the bottom. It doesn't have any adjustable feet that you can pop it up at, but still presents a relatively ergonomic tilt and angle. Otherwise, on the side here is the aforementioned speaker. It is a single speaker, not stereo, though. The keyboard itself offers a nice responsiveness and tactile sensation when tapping down on it. Pretty similar in terms of the feeling to a Apple keyboard um, and other more modern island-style keyboards. It's not quite as clicky as, say, on a mechanical keyboard, but at the same time, it's good enough and offers a very clean presentation. So here's what the touchscreen portion looks like. Once we plug it into the computer, the drivers will install automatically, and there is an additional software that you should install from the company's website. There's also a quick link here that allows you to, again, customize the icons uh, later on. And then you can interact with the various menus. So here we have all the various home screens that we can customize with custom applications that we can drag over from our computer for things like, for example, Spotify, a specific game, or any other quick launch shortcut that you may want to access at a quick click. Initial impressions would be that the touchscreen itself is fairly responsive, and it is quite bright and punchy in terms of the colors. However, it isn't an IPS screen, unfortunately. It is just a regular LCD display, which means that if you tilt it, it does seem like the viewing angles are not the strongest. Not the biggest deal, because this is not a touchscreen that you'll be using for interacting with media, for example. Now, some quick shortcuts that they have built on in, including one for the browser, so if we take a closer look at that, I can tap on the browser, and again, it will open up Chrome here. I can also tap on my desktop to return to this home screen, or my computer to open up this file manager. So this all works actually really well just by default. I can also change the brightness of the display here to be higher or to be, to be lower, and this is actually for the brightness of both your computer's display and also for the touchscreen panel itself. I can also do things like open up the software link application. This will tell you how to download it and how to open it up on your computer. Tapping on back here, I can also open up the calculator from my computer side. Uh, in addition to tap on searching, that will open up the command prompt and begin allowing you to search up a specific app. Now, if you don't want to use this touchscreen only as a programmable keys to command your computer, you can also open up some micro widgets or applications on here. For example, I can tap on the calculator here, and that will allow this side to be transformed into a real local calculator. It allows me to easily tap along and do some quick calculations. You can't really change this to a scientific calculator, so it's quite basic, but it's functional. The overall screen size, by the way, of this touchscreen, I would say measures around 4.5 inches diagonally, so it's comparable to a smartphone. It's kind of like having a phone's display merged onto the side of your keyboard, and it's a pretty clever and innovative idea. Overall, again, the responsiveness is also quite good. So if we're playing back a video here in the background, one of our own clips, we can change the volume higher and lower. I can also play and pause the sound, uh, even if you're watching back a YouTube video here, and that works really well. I can skip tracks, and all of this is done quite well. Now, the UI for this widget is a little janky. It's a little too colorful for my liking, uh, but hopefully they can can uh, create some future software updates and add even more features or allow you to customize the look a little bit. But overall, the functionality is definitely there, and I have no real complaints as far as being able to control your skip tracks as well as volume on playing back any media content for your machine. Now, I can also tap on the numpad here just to 
have this pop along, kind of transforming it into more of a traditional keyboard layout. Now I can also tap on the mouse key, which is the last feature basically, just to transform it into this touchpad. It's a virtual touchpad, but actually works quite well. So I can control this virtual cursor on screen, and it's actually quite sensitive and easy to use. Again, the touch screen itself does work relatively well. I can also close out of applications by tapping and even right-clicking just to open up additional controls. With that being said, this is not a multi-touch enabled touchscreen, it seems. At least the software doesn't recognize it as such. So I can't kind of drag around and then tap on, you know, the bottom key and then drag to highlight different things. Uh, there's also no real double tapping. So there are some limitations of using it, but for very simple clicking and navigating around, it is functional if you don't have a mouse with you. Finally, the last thing that we're going to do a quick demo of is going to be the speaker quality on the keyboard. So let's tap on play. Pausing the track there, takeaways would be that the audio quality is actually pretty good. It may not be the richest sounding or giving you the best stereo separation because it's only coming out from the side, but at least it's really close to your ears and so you do get a very full sound. It gets quite loud and especially with mids and trebles actually does quite good, but it is lacking a little bit in terms of bass. So that's more or less it as far as our review of the Voa Moco TK Board Pro. Definitely one of the most distinctive and unique keyboards that I've reviewed as of yet, and for only $100, it's actually not bad at all when it comes to the features and utilities that you're getting. Essentially, a keyboard with a modern Type-C connector, in addition to a mouse, as well as customizable buttons and shortcut icons. If this was made by a name brand, for example, by Samsung or by Asus, I could easily see it selling for two or three times the price. So it definitely is a very striking kind of conversation starter that also offers surprising utility. It's not only just a gimmick of having a touchscreen in a keyboard. So although there are still a few rough corners for the company to work out, I think that, uh, for example, offering more support and drivers for machines like Chromebooks, um, in addition to maybe adding more functionality to this touchscreen, such as the ability for it to maybe mirror what you're seeing on your uh, computer would be pretty cool, allowing you to maybe even multitask, albeit on a really small screen. Those are other use cases that I think could be pretty exciting if they continue with the development down the road. But as it is, just by adding different icons and some very quick launch shortcuts, it's already a pretty cool idea and I think it works quite well for what it is as a first generation product. The keyboard itself also feels quite comfortable when it comes to typing. It may not have the most springiness compared to a true mechanical keyboard, but as far as these uh, typical island style keyboards are concerned, it certainly does its job and offers a very comfortable and natural typing experience for essays, documents, and other papers. So if you are looking for a unique keyboard that offers more customization for different uh, programs and commands that you simply won't find from any other standard layout, um, an all-in-one design that will strike up conversations, this is definitely a very cool idea and gadget to take a closer look at. That's been the Voa Moco TK Board Pro Unique Touchscreen Keyboard.